They don't know how it's going to work or when it's going to start or who's going to be allowed here. But the important thing is, according to the latest Brexit papers, at last they're going to stop all these immigrants coming over here and doing all those jobs they do. So now we'll be able to walk past a field in Hereford full of rotting apples, knowing that means no pole has been up a tree picking them and putting them to use. So now we can look at fields full of apples going completely mouldy, knowing they're British apples full of British maggots because we've got our country back. And half the staff in restaurants in London are from the EU, so now we can look forward to going out for something to eat, fetching an empty plate from the kitchen and having an English meal that hasn't been cooked or prepared and doesn't consist of any food and then looking out of the window for an hour and leaving because at last we've got back our sovereignty. We can lie on hospital trolleys, singing the national anthem between screens, knowing that no longer does any of our taxes have to go to the pay of foreign nurses. And we can place a union jack in our open wound as it turns septic, crying tears of happiness as we know we're in charge of our affairs once again. This is the boost that the low paid have been waiting for because low wages are caused by immigration. For example, the nurses have gone several years without a pay rise because of a pay cap imposed by Bulgarians. The Prime Minister tried her best to give them a rise, but Bulgarians took her guinea pig hostage and said, you'll keep them poor or we squirt carpet cleaner in his eye. What could she do? The staff at McDonald's have been on strike for decent pay because Ronald McDonald is a Romanian. These tight-fisted Romanian clowns come over here, setting up their burger chains, getting people to work for them for seven pounds an hour. Well, luckily, once we're out of the EU, most of our investment will come from America, where I'm sure their burger chains treat staff with much more kindness. The slogan that the government seems keen on is British jobs for British workers. Now, this might take a little bit of thought because it's not always easy to work out exactly what a British job is. Making pie and mash is sort of British, though obviously not the pastry bit because that's French. Spitfire pilot sounds British, although a fifth of them were Polish, so not that. Being Jacob Rees-Mogg as an heir of British, but also a whiff of medieval Italian Pope. But British jobs like night, chimney sweep, coming 26th in Eurovision and pissing in a foreign fountain will at last be reserved for British workers. The new system will be fair because foreigners will be allowed to stay here for two years until they're kicked out. And this won't put them off in any way at all, because all of us, when we're choosing where to relocate to, prefer a place that's going to kick us out later. This is why the first thing that people ask estate agents when they're moving to a new area is, what are the schools like? Are there any nice parks nearby? And will we be kicked out again in two years, please? Because we really don't like to become institutionalised. This all seems fair because the 300,000 British people who've gone to live in Spain are all critical to their local economy. For example, many of them are top quality, high grade criminals. We don't just send them any old burglar. These are the finest bank robbers, hit men and plotters of major heists, providing skills that the Spanish economy is often very, very short of. They also take many of our most talented and professional pensioners. Many of them are so skillful that they've lived in a Spanish village for over 20 years and yet still manage to not have the slightest idea how to say please in anything other than English. So it's encouraging that the Brexit negotiations are going so smoothly. And after all, David Davis said, no one said Brexit would be easy. And that's true, as no one did. Apart from his colleague, Liam Fox, who said that a Brexit deal should be the easiest in history. But it would be unfair to interpret that as meaning that he thought it might be easy in any way. But in some ways, the Conservatives are making it look easy because they clearly haven't got the slightest idea what they're doing. They're like if I was at a meeting of a Formula One team asking for ideas on how to improve an engine. I'd just sit there, occasionally looking at a diagram going, What's that then? And then carry on reading a copy of Viz. Some of the clauses that pop up do seem a little bit surprising, such as it turns out we're going to have to pay a £50 billion bill to leave. But at least this was mentioned all the time by the Leave people throughout the referendum campaign, so we can't say we weren't warned. Occasionally during the campaign, 
some of the details were slightly different. So they put on the side of a bus that 350 million pounds a week was going to come from the EU towards us. But that's just a detail. The main thing is everyone accepted there were going to be lots of big numbers. Some Tory MPs even said that we would get a better deal from the EU once we're not a member than we've been getting when we were members. Well, that'd be brilliant. I'm not sure if that's how membership works, is it? Like if you go to a snooker club and say, can I come in? Are you a member? Not in the slightest. Then use all our facilities. Here's the chalk, there's the tables. This is Cindy, she'll give you a massage, just give a whistle. Can I come in? I'm a member. Get out! Cheeky bastard, look at him. Get out! And to make all this happen, the government has to introduce special Henry VIII laws. So at last we can get out of the outdated bureaucracy of the EU and move forward into the 16th century. By the 1st of December, they'll say they've got to introduce a special Ethelred the Unready law, where they're allowed to burn down our village and hand over our women folk to the Danes, because it's all going brilliantly, and at last, once again, we can be proud.